So Games Workshop's versus round cage match with the new Brutalist Dreadnought was kind of underwhelming, so I thought that we'd make a better one. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today I thought we'd do something a bit different and see if we could maybe get some better answers than Warhammer community might have given us as to who might win a few conflicts between some fighty walkers in 40k. Games Workshop via Warhammer community have been making some hype articles for their new Strike Force Agastus box over the course of this week. One of the most interesting things in the box is that new Primaris Brutalis Dreadnought, the redemptive variant with the fighty claws that looks kinda scary. And one of the articles for it had it fight off against a whole bunch of other factions, fighty walkers, to see who comes out on top. I know it was just for a bit of fun, and it's probably made pretty quickly by someone in the Warhammer community team just to put some new models in action, but it did kind of annoy me when I was reading over it. I just felt unsatisfied, like it hadn't really told us anything about how much it could do, when you could quite easily calculate some numbers, or at least run a few more tests. I noticed that some of you guys out there also had similar kind of sentiments, I noticed on the 40k main Facebook page someone had commented that they prefer my way of doing the versus battles like I did with that Angron versus everyone video earlier in the week, one where both sides get to fight and you weight it per points, just to try and aim to give a bit of a clearer idea of what the model is actually likely to do rather than just the dice rolls as they came out. I was pretty interested as to how the numbers might work out for the fights so I thought we'd do that this time. So to try and rerun Games Workshop's contest perhaps a little bit better, they basically had the Brutalis Dreadnought fight against a fair few combat walkers, a Carnifex, a Wardog, a Death Dread and a Mauler Fiend. They rolled off to see who went first, and that unit that went first got to shoot and then assault the other one, so basically got a massive advantage over the other on the drop. The outcome of their fights was that the Brutalis killed all its opponents, though the Carnifex got very lucky and managed to drag the Brutalis Dreadnought down with it with some death throws, though it did seem kind of statistically improbable. And at least by the way that they'd worded it, it sounded like they'd forgot about the Dreadnought's minus one damage rule for a phase, which would have been critical. My main issues with the contest that I wanted to try and fix were these. The Dreadnought almost certainly cost far more points than anything it fought. I'm going to base it as around about the Redemptor Dreadnought's cost at 185 for what we know at the moment. I guess we'll find out a bit more later. Without waiting for points, then obviously it's going to be odds on if things are in any way balanced. And there's maybe a bit less to be said for it just beating up smaller walkers. Next, the opposing vehicles weren't really equipped with optimal anti-tank weapons. The Brutalis had been given the claws and the multi-melters, exactly the options it would like to take for fighting vehicles, but the rest of them had been equipped by a bunch of stuff that was kind of suboptimal. For example, the Carnifex was a screamer killer rather than one with crushing claws or venom cannons, and the Knight didn't have a slaughter claw, even though that would have done better against the Dreadnought. Furthermore, the contest was just really random. Rolling to go first just gives a massive advantage to one unit or the other. The Brutalis Dreadnought killed two of them before they even got to attack. Perhaps they could have run it twice with each one of the units trying to go first, but even then you are going to come down to a bit of randomness on the dice. The Brutalis Dreadnought might just fail to kill a unit if it just gets unlucky this turn, rather than basing it on things like average outputs or running a whole load of attempts. Overall, the contest just felt a little bit rigged and not particularly fair. Usually I wouldn't be too critical for this sort of thing if it was just some other random content creator doing it, but seeing as it's Games Workshop and they're trying to sell this Dreadnought to people, making it look way better than it is probably just seems a bit disingenuous perhaps. For that matter, I'm not sure they even really need to, given the stat lines that it's got. It does seem to be very efficient for the points. Trying to do things a little bit better though, this is still just going to be a damage contest for fun, and in reality a whole load of other factors contribute to real 40k games, things like the speed of the models, the synergies that they have, and other benefits like say the Night War Dog getting objective secured. But all that aside, for the purposes of smashing some models together a little bit more scientifically, we'll give each walker a round of shooting and fighting. And seeing as it's a big deal for the Brutalis Dreadnought's melter weapons, we'll arbitrarily give it the melter rule for one of the multi-melters but not the other, to represent the chance of it being outside of 12 inches sometimes but not others. The victor here will be determined by the one that kills the greatest percentage of the other model's health, and then we'll weight it per point to see who's actually more efficient in a damage and defence sort of perspective. And in terms of additional rules and things, we won't give anyone else chapter tactics and things, it looks like they didn't in the article, but they can have their army-wide special rules. The Brutalist Dreadnought I think will actually be best off getting Devastator Doctrine for the Heavy Stubbers, all of its other weapons are high AP so don't really care. The Chaos Knight can be an Iconoclast one, and the Mauler Fiend can have the Wanton Slaughter special rule, so exploding sixes to hit. 
The Tyranids and the Orc ones are a bit harder to do for this. Their special rules only tend to last a turn or so. Plus they need other models on the board that are absent, like a war boss or something to provide synaptic imperatives. So they'll go without for this one. Finally, I'll do my best to equip each of their different combatants with their best anti-tank loadouts. Just things on their datasheet rather than big codex upgrades and things. So we're not doing things like tailored demonic favours or adaptive physiologies here. All that being said, let's get into it. First up, we'll use the leak stat line for the Brutalis Dreadnought, and we're going to assume 185 points, the same as the Redemptor at the moment. The points cost for the Brutalis aren't out yet, it might be a little bit more expensive than this. We'll assume 13 wounds as well, despite Games Workshop sort of implying that it might be 14. Again, that one's a bit uncertain, so we're going for the best information that we have at the moment. In any case, this guy's going to be hitting with four multi-melter shots at close range, eight shots with the twin Icarus Stubbers, and then we're going to take the Brutalis Talons with the strength times 2, AP4 and damage D3 plus 3, plus it can reroll wound rolls for some spectacularly efficient anti-vehicle melee. First up into the ring we have the Death Dread, 85 points for an Orky Walker, this guy's a very basic Dreadnought, 3 attacks base, though it will have an extra 4 attacks from 4 different Dread Claws, all hitting at strength 10, AP3 and damage 3. It does seem that the most efficient loadout for this guy is literally just to reload up on those Dread Claws. The custom Mega Blasters and things aren't worth paying for per the point, at least in this contest. When it comes to damage, the Brutalis Dreadnought really has these guys as pretty much the optimum kind of target. Anything that's toughness 7 and a bunch of wounds, it's going to kill spectacularly easily. The Stubbers in Devastator Doctrine do 1.2 wounds. The Multi Melters do 8 when you average for being in or out of Melter range randomly. And then should any Death Dreads be alive at the end of that, the melee with the Talons should do an extra 20 wounds as well. I think it is worth taking into account the shooting and the melee, say for example to simulate it fighting multiple Death Dreads at once. In any case, if it managed to allocate its attacks perfectly, then in theory you could kill 3 or 4 Death Dreads with all this damage. There are only 8 wounds, so it's a theoretical 366% damage efficiency against the Death Dreads. In return, the 85 point critter can do 3.2 wounds with the Dread Claws. The minus 1 damage from Duty Eternal reduces that a bit, which doesn't help it, and this adds up to a 40% damage efficiency into the Brutalis. Overall, in terms of both damage or defense, it just isn't really great news for the Death Dread. Even when you wait for the points cost that the Death Dread costs less than half the amount of the Brutalis, it's still not close. In terms of efficiency, the Brutalis Dreadnought kills around 300 odd points worth of Death Dread each turn. The Death Dread kills around 74 points worth of Brutalis, and overall it adds up to a 188% victory for the Brutalis Dreadnought. Moving on, and here we've got the Chaos Knight Wardog. I think overall it adds up to the Wardog Stalker being the most efficient into vehicles. He can take the Demon Breath Spear, Big Melter with a strength of 9, and damage D6. He can't take a Carapace Armed Melter Gun, but he can take that Fearsome Slaughter Claw in melee for a big strength times 2, AP3, and damage D3 plus 3. He doesn't get a Dread Household bonus as per the previous rules, but he will get Iconoclast if he wants it as an army-wide special rule. When battle is joined, the Brutalis Dreadnought doesn't find it quite as easy to take off wounds off this guy compared with the Death Dread. The Ion Shields it gets gives it a 5 plus envelope range, and that does help out against the Multi Melters, meaning that they only get 5.3 wounds against the War Dog. The Stubbers with their Devastator Doctrine again chip in with the 1.2, and in melee though, the Talons do exactly the same as they did to the Death Dread so 20 wounds dealt there as there's no invul. Overall it's a very very dead war dog once more, over 26 wounds dealt to it compared with its total of 12, the Brutalis has more than doubled it out once more. In return the war dog does hit back pretty hard though, the demon breath spear averages 4 wounds, the stubber chips in with another 0.3 on average, and then in melee the slaughter claw does the vast majority of the work, with the extra attack and AP from Iconoclast, it's 5 attacks, AP minus 4 and damage D3 plus 3, just enough to actually bring down the Brutalis Dreadnought, 13.3 wounds compared with the 13 that the Brutalis has. Overall the Brutalis Dreadnoughts killed 321 points worth of War Dog, but the War Dogs killed 189 points worth of Brutalis Dreadnought. A fairly solid win for the Brutalis here, and when you wait for points that winds up being a 133% victory to the Brutalis. It is a bit ahead, but not a crazy amount, even with the ability to have a good chance of bodying two War Dogs in one round. Moving on, we've got the Tyranid Carnifex, really quite a complex datasheet, though I feel that the standard Carnifex is probably the way to go rather than the Screamer Killer. The Screamer Killer might well be one of the most efficient choices in general, but with only strength 6 it is going to struggle against the Dreadnought, plus the minus 1 damage works out better that you're probably best off with a standard one with the Crushing Claws. 
For this one, I've given it crushing claws and a venom cannon. It seems that the acute senses probably doesn't quite work out to be worth more value than it costs. It seems that keeping it relatively cheap at 145 points with just those upgrades seems like the way to go. In general though, kind effects are fairly scary. 9 wounds with minus 1 damage and a 2 plus save means they're fairly hardy. The crushing claws here will give it a strength 10, AP minus 3 and a big damage D3 plus 3. And the heavy venom cannon is a big strength 9, AP 3 and damage 4 attack with 3 shots, so fairly strong there. It also gets an extra attack in the turn that it charges, which they do count as charging in this one, and this will further help it out. In battle, the Morty Melters chip in with 6.4 wounds, the Stubbers with 0.6. Devastator Doctrine actually helps both of those out this time, as the AP-5 for the Melters actually matters for getting through the Carnifex's Thick Chitin. In combat, the Claws still absolutely shred it despite the minus 1 damage, another 14.5 wounds there. Overall, the Brutalist Dreadnought seems to have a reasonable chance of killing multiple ones of these each turn, almost 2.5 Carnifex's dealt dead on average. In return, the Carnifex does a decent amount, the Heavy Venom Cannon does 2.5 wounds to the Brutalist Dreadnought, and the Crushing Claws with a D3 plus 3 damage but minus 1 is 7.4. Overall, it's around about 10, so 140 points worth of Brutalist kills. It's not particularly close this one, even given the Carnifex some pretty nice gear. So far, given its points cost, it seems to prepare worse against the Brutalist compared with anyone else. I guess the Brutalist weapons are just extra good at killing it, with spectacularly high damage and high AP. Finally, last but not least, we have the Chaos Space Marine Mauler Fiend. This one's 140 points and a 12 wound demon engine. It gets to strike with the Mauler Fiend Fists, hitting at strength 14, AP 3 and damage D3 plus 3, and also has a Magma Cutter in the mouth. That one is basically a Melter Shot at close range. As a demon engine, it gets a 5 plus invul as well, and for army wide special rules, we'll allow this one to be in wanton slaughter. The usual way that to do it for army wide special rules is that if they can be in it for at least 3 turns over the course of a game, they can have it and Chaos Space Marines can do that. It will be a late game charge though for this one. Between an Imbul Strength 14 and a Melter Shot, this thing does look like it's on paper very good for taking out the Brutalis, as well as being a bit cheaper than things like the Knight and the Carnifex. In battle, the Mauler Fiend's 5 plus Imbul save, both at range and in melee, really does come in massive help here. The Multi Melters only do 5.3 wounds to it, the Stubbers 1.2, and in melee the Talons get their lowest result against this rather than anything else, a 5 plus Invul save being a really nice counter to the high AP. Overall, it's still very respectable for the Brutalist Dreadnought. You could definitely expect one to kill a Mauler Fiend in any one turn. 19.5 wounds on average compared with 12 for the Mauler Fiend, so 228 points worth of Dino Bot killed. In response, though, the Mauler Fiend can hit back very, very hard. Its shooting phase opens up with a Magma Cutter, dealing an average of 2 wounds, but really it's the Mauler Fiend Fists that do the heavy lifting. 6 attacks at strength 14 with D3 plus 3 damage do a lot of work against the Brutalist Dreadnought, it's pretty much the ideal target for it. If it gets Wanton Slaughter, then it's up to around about 14 wounds dealt on average. Combined with the Melter Cutter, that'll add up to 16 wounds overall or so. For the Dreadnought killing the Mauler Fiend and the Mauler Fiend attacking the Dreadnought, they kill around about the same number of points worth of each other, 228 versus 224. On an individual level, it is still a decent victory for the Brutalist Dreadnought, but when you weight it per points, as the Mauler Fiend costs a lot cheaper, it's actually an 129% victory to the Mauler Fiends. They both kill around the same amount of points of each other, but you get more Mauler Fiends for every Brutalist Dreadnought that you have, so it's a victory there. Even if we did decide that the Mauler Fiend didn't get Wanton Slaughter for this contest, it would still win by a reasonable margin, though it would be quite a bit closer. I felt this was kind of interesting given Games Workshop's contest where the Mauler Fiend didn't even get to strike the Brutalist Dreadnought at all because it was killed first. I did feel it was kind of robbed in that one. So overall, on a one model versus one model perspective, the Brutalist Dreadnought will come out on top against any of these four. But if you wait for points, then actually the Mauler Fiend is a decent amount ahead of it. Pretty much ideal to chew through the Dreadnought's defences and resist its attacks with a 5 plus Invul. Otherwise, in terms of efficiency, it's the War Dog that's next closest, then the Death Dread, then the Carnifex. At least in this little just for fun battle, it's in a complete vacuum. As I said at the start, I certainly don't think it means that the Mauler Fiend is flat better than the Dreadnought or anything. The Dreadnought will be able to get far more synergies than the Mauler Fiend would. Plus, the Dreadnought's a lot better against a lot more targets, and ranged firepower has a bit of a premium as you can do it more reliably from further away. I did find it interesting that the Mauler Fiend can absolutely body the Brutalist Dreadnought, though. I guess its profile is just fairly skewed to taking down heavies. Overall, though, it was kind of fun to get some very slightly more scientific numbers out of those matchups. 
The Brutalis Dreadnought, I think, does come out pretty well out of it. It's particularly strong against things without involves for its good AP, and as in a single round of combat, it can potentially kill more things than its own points cost is. It ideally wants to get in combat with some really, really big heavy things, things like Chaos Knights or Imperial Knights with a whole ton of points, where it can do absolute maximal damage. I'll be interested to hear your guys' thoughts on the fights, though. Did they go the way that you'd expect? If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where I'll certainly keep up the regular 40k videos, with new ones out just about every day. If you've enjoyed this one, then feel free to take a look at my Angron vs Everyone video, that's a similar sort of style one, putting Angron through his places against the rest of the 40k faction leaders. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics has a Patreon page as well, and you can find that in the video description below. The channel's Patreon is what allows me to keep on making 40k videos like this just about every day, and if you are enjoying a lot then any support is massively appreciated. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.